Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar, which is brought to you by the CD Foundation and presented by OpsMX, one of the sponsors of Spinnaker Summit 2022. The next Spinnaker Summit is happening next month, May 8th and 9th in Vancouver, Canada. It will be co-located with CDCon, and we can't wait to see you and entire community there. My name is Fahit Dermanji. I work at the Linux Foundation as the Executive Director of the CD Foundation. CD Foundation is an open source community improving the world's ability to deliver software with security and speed. We help you figure out the best DevOps path towards becoming a high-performing team using open source. Today, Gopinath Rebala joins us to present the webinar with the title, What Spinnaker Users Should Know About Argo CD. This was pre-recorded, but Gopinath and OpsMX folks are in the chat for the premiere today. So please ask your questions as like they come to you and Gopinath and his colleagues could answer those questions as uh, he presents the topic. Gopinath, I hand it over to you to tell us more about Spinnaker and Argo CD. Thank you, Fatih. Uh, Happy to have this uh, opportunity to share our views on this. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, I'm Gopi Rebala. I'm CTO of OpsMX. And <clears throat> I'm also a technical oversight committee member for Spinnaker. And we work with lots of uh, organizations that use Spinnaker. We are one of the largest contributor, contributors to Spinnaker. So we wanted to be heard. We see Argo coming up. Uh, and we wanted to have a conversation with Argo and Spinnaker together. Um, thanks for everyone for joining us today. Uh, brief overview on OpsMX. Uh, we are a continuous delivery company. We work with Spinnaker and Argo. Our goal is to ship better software faster. We do it by enhancing this automation intelligently and empowering everyone in the process. Um, we work with a large number of organizations in configuring their uh, delivery systems. Uh, let's try jump right into it. Um, why do we need to consider Spinnaker and Argo um, together? Uh, we know both of these are open source systems and widely used in the industry today. And large number of organizations that use Spinnaker uh, also use different tools of various, uh, different groups. And there's always uh, new things that uh, features that we want to in include and enhance. So we do see Argo coming up in some of the groups within the organizations that are currently using Spinnaker. And there have been successful integrations by using those features of both Argo and Spinnaker together. And both have very strong communities. Um, so it makes sense to discuss what is going on in the industry and how these two work together. Uh, so now, uh, just to give a highlights of Spinnaker and, and Argo, um, th th this is obviously not a comprehensive list of what Spinnaker can do, but more on what are its strengths today when uh, people are using them and what are the major things that they're using it for. It's proven high scalability system. Um, uh, there are a lot of organizations that run thousands of pipeline executions a day using Spinnaker to deliver their software to various environments. It supports multi-cloud environments, all public clouds, Kubernetes, uh, serverless. And there are extensions that are done to the Spinnaker that support um, not as much well-known environments like Delbumi or a few other things. So it's a very widely used for delivering to these large number of environments. And it's pipeline structure, it's a visual pipeline that enables a collaboration uh, between all the stakeholders in the delivery. It essentially gives you a visual representation of what is going on in the delivery um, and also presents the uh, target cluster view, what's currently running, allows you to diagnose faster share the information, recover from problems a lot faster. So these are all real strengths. And since the enterprises have their own policies uh, for, for delivering for production environments and highly secure environments, they, there are enough integrations that are already done with the DevOps tools. For example, vulnerability analysis tools or policy verification tools or uh, other enterprise application systems uh, it has those built-in uh, 
capabilities that enterprises are already using for secure delivery. Um, now, looking at the power of Argo, uh, Argo is uh, primarily designed for Kubernetes as a GitOps uh, controller. It's a Kubernetes native controller. You configure an application that represents the GitOps project and a target namespace in a cluster. Uh, it runs in the Kubernetes looking for any drift or changes in the Git and the drift in the target environment and keeps them in sync. It's a, you know, purely based on GitOps model. It, it, because of the nature of Kubernetes with the declarative structure, it can apply the declarative uh, uh, manifest to it and then verify if the state is reached or not and look for changes in the Git in the declarative spec and keep them together. Um, it has a strong um, progressive rollout integrations. Basically, rollouts is again another controller allows you to declare it to specify what the target structure needs to be and allows imperative spec on what steps need to be taken. The strength here is it has a previous integrations to service mesh like Istio and uh, the routers to control the traffic and any failure that can be uh, detected and automated rollbacks. We'll talk a little bit more on that. That's uh, one of the core strengths that we usually exploit from Argo. It also supports application sets, which is essentially if you are rolling out to the multi-cluster, uh, different regions, same application going to n number of uh, clusters, then uh, it supports that structure with the select uh, statements. Uh, one of the drawbacks there is it, you do not have much control on the progressive deployments to all these clusters. All the clusters are treated the same and gets deployed. Uh, so now that we understand a bit more about what are the strengths of Argo and Spinnaker, and uh, you know, let's get into how these things are being used together today and what are, how each one enhances the other one. Um, as we saw, there's a progressive rollout of a deployment in Kubernetes is a strength of uh, Argo. And in Spinnaker, you can achieve that, but you need to use multiple stages. And you may have to write your own custom stages uh, for doing that. And that you get it automatically if you use the rollouts. So that's one of the places that's uh, fairly strong synergy between Argo and Spinnaker that you can use the rollout, uh, Argo rollout with Spinnaker deployment for Kubernetes, of course. Um, the other place is the staged uh, and delivery. As the typical workflows always involve some kind of a test environment and then pre-production or staging and then going to the production. Because Argo is more of a GitOps model, each of these environments have their own Git, Git repositories and the promotion across these environments is uh, usually manual. And automating that and having a structure that can support that uh, is what Spinnaker bring to, brings to it because Spinnaker has always been used to automate this delivery across different environments. And the other one that we've seen is the progressive delivery across uh, multiple clusters. In the same application, there are a couple of different use cases uh, that are most common. One is having this application run in multiple clusters and uh, while delivering to these clusters, you want to have some kind of a progressive uh, delivery. You deploy to one cluster first, verify everything is good, and then go to the others kind of. And, and then um, only on success, you deploy to everyone. The other use case that we see here in the multi-cluster is in the SaaS environment, uh, there are sometimes uh, a common SaaS structure and th there is per customer or Per application, you have a separate system that's uh, dedicated for that customer. In that case, you end up with n number of clusters that you need to de de deploy to with a slight variation in configuration. And so that again uh, becomes a, a configuration uh, difficulty in setting it up, uh, which uh, Spinnaker can really solve for Argo. So let's get into a bit more detail on each one of these and say how they work together. Um, so Argo rollouts, if you're uh, not fully familiar with it, Argo rollouts is also a Kubernetes controller. 
it is independent of Argo CD. Uh, it, it works as a controller with a looking for a custom resource uh, definition. And, and once you deploy the custom resource, it picks it up and then executes that. And so it basically enables advanced deployment strategies like Canary or Blue Green. Uh, it, it supports traffic shaping independent of uh, scaling the instances. So you can control, uh, you can have a grander control in your delivery process, de de deployment process. Uh, the, the abstraction it provides in terms of the spec also makes it easy to use. And it's already currently being used by a large number of organizations. Uh, as you can see in the picture here, there are some of these that already are used for uh, analysis while deploying uh, using the Argo rollout. It, so how does this uh, blue-green work? I mean, this is a fairly generic concept, uh, but just wanted to touch on um, uh, the, the rollouts with the uh, blue-green. Uh, with so we can discuss how these uh, strategies are set. It, it supports blue-green canary. Uh, in the blue-green, you are looking at bringing up a new instance with a similar number of uh, uh, instances of the new version uh, as that of the old version. And so these are the cases where you use you don't have to do the test in the production. Uh, you essentially bring up the new instances and then switch traffic to it. Uh, the, the, all the production traffic goes to the new version. And the advantage um, of the blue-green is that you have the old version running. In case something doesn't work, you can switch back to the old version almost in, instantaneously. Uh, so there is the you can reduce the amount of downtime you have. And once you switch to the new version, all the traffic will be sent to the new version. It's a, there are cases where the blue green is the most suited uh, structure, um, particularly when there are other dependencies behind which are related to your database or third party services, this structure works uh, the best. Uh, but it has its uh, disadvantages in that in the production, you won't be able to test it. Um, so the rollback for the blue green works by simply switching the traffic. So how do we determine the failure, how quickly you can determine uh, or uh, either manual or you can automate it through the steps with automatic verification. Uh, we'll look into that a little bit uh, later. And the Canary deployment here, it works with the uh, uh, ability to test in production. So you bring up a new instance of, of a new version uh, in parallel to the existing versions. Uh, here, uh, if you want to test it, you could uh, set up uh, based on the header-based routing, uh, the test traffic that's going to a Canary, or you can have the production traffic going to Canary. In fact, the advantage here with the Canary instances is that the blast radius is small. In case of failure, you will have the production instance working in parallel to the existing current version that's running in the production. And small amount of traffic goes to the new version. And if uh, uh, everything looks good, you can increase the traffic and the number of instances for the canary. Uh, and if you find something is uh, not working well, the, the blast radius is small and you can roll back fairly quickly and switch all the traffic back to the existing version. Um, it, it, so there are advantages of blue-green uh, and canary. In the blue-green, you can still do testing, but uh, you essentially bring up a separate service. It's not simply routing the existing traffic, but you actually bring up a separate service and have a test traffic go to it. And if everything looks good, then you can have switch the production traffic uh, to that instance. And then you have to take down the, uh, the instance you brought up for test for the service routing. And so there's a little bit more complexity there. But all of these are uh, supported by Argo rollouts. Um, we'll quickly show so, some of the uh, specifications, how we can set it up with the Argo rollout specification, and then how to specify the rollback conditions. The rollback conditions can be manual or automatic. Uh, today, we will look at the specification and how to do either one of them. Yeah. So it's a quick view of how the Argo rollout spec 
is specified. The things to look at here is it's a, a rollout type. Basically, as you know, it's a custom resource uh, that we apply. And there is a controller operator model. It picks up the custom resource and works on it. Uh, this works completely independent of Argo CD, as we discussed. So if you're working with Argo CD, since Argo CD is always trying to synchronize with the Git, uh, it, essentially what happens is the Argo rollout uh, sends a notification to Argo CD saying it is in progress and the Argo CD is, stops its synchronization. Because the process here, it, it takes uh, time to synchronize and the Argo CD would at that point see it as not in sync, which is incorrect. And, and also we don't want uh, the override to happen. And so. But in, the, in this case, with the Spinnaker, we are not using Argo CD. We are simply using Argo rollout uh, as part of a Spinnaker stage to deploy. So the second thing to note here is this workload reference. Uh, here, what you are looking at is the deployment and deployment name. So th this is most useful when you're converting an existing deployment to a rollout. Uh, let's say you already have uh, services that are running in production with the deployment names, you want to start doing a, a rollouts on top of those deployments. And so you essentially are replacing your deployment uh, type with that of a rollout. So it, you'd scale down your deployment number of instances and then kick, out, kick off a rollout with the reference to the deployment. So rollout essentially goes and looks at the deployment that's currently running, picks up the spec, for that deployment, and then uh, does the does the deployment with Kubernetes with the strategy that is defined here. So this actually is one spec. And the strategy uh, then specifies how the rollout happens. Uh, in Kubernetes, we have a rolling update as a default. So essentially, this one is adding other strategies to that rolling update as a canary. In the canary services, now we can specify the steps. Uh, here, wait essentially uh, has the integrations internally to go update the, the ingress weights for the traffic shaping. And so it allows the traffic to automatically uh, apply to the new version with the 20, 40, 60, and specifies the duration here. Um, so as you can see, this is a simple spec of the rollout that, uh, and that can be used in Spinnaker pipeline directly as a rollout manifest deploy. But uh, the pause and duration here, as you see, it's a, it's not doing anything other than waiting for some amount of time and then changing it. But what do we want to do is actually make sure the new version that we just deployed is working properly before we go to the next step. And so it's not time-based, but actually uh, verify based on the metrics or even logs. So to do that, uh, this is a simple example. Uh, if you're familiar with Kayanta in Spinnaker, you can use that for this automatic verification uh, with, with your metrics that you're deploying. Some of the complexities that we face uh, in, in the deployment there are when you do a new version deploy, um, we, you need to specify what is the uh, ability for querying for the metrics for the new and old version. So that's is solved by uh, rollouts in, in an interesting way. Here, uh, it computes the pod hash values for the manifest for the existing v1 and v2 and applies them as a label so we can do the selections. So as we generate metrics from these services uh, to monitoring systems like Prometheus, Datadog, New Relic, it's very easy to query for data from generated from these services to them. And so here the template is defined to say how do you look for data from these two different versions that are being deployed as part of the canary. Uh, and, uh, and then we can do the analysis. Um, and in the analysis steps, we can specify uh, actually the uh, type of analysis to do and what are the things that can be that needs to be checked during the analysis. So <clears throat> once if, if this analysis fails, then the rollout knows that there is something wrong with the 
uh, roll out and automatically rolls back to the version it has started with. Um, the other thing to note here is this experiment uh, under the canary steps. So the uh, when we roll out a new version, there can be characteristics based on this application that makes the performance of the new version different from the existing one. It could be because there are caching that is being done uh, makes it more performant. At the same time, it also uses more memory than the freshly deployed one. So what to eliminate those kind of differences, uh, what the experiment system does is automatically deploys a existing production version in a, side by side with the new version uh, that we are deploying. So when we look for the performance metrics, uh, they are statistically comparable. Uh, so you could use the kind of for that. And we, we have an extension with OpsMX Verifier that also can look at logs uh, for these systems. You can look at logs for not only the service that is being deployed, but all the services in the application to make that decision. Um, so uh, just to recap, the rollout spec is a, is a Kubernetes manifest. You can simply use it as a deploy manifest in a Kubernetes uh, deploy stage. The, the only <clears throat> drawback without any changes we use that way is that rollout does happen, but the status of the rollout with individual steps and their feedback is not presented uh, to the UI in Spinnaker. Uh, so for this, we have an extension the, in Cloud Driver for Kubernetes, uh, there is extension classes that allow uh, extend to support different uh, um, uh, res custom resources. So uh, extending that to support the rollout feedback uh, allows us to have those displayed in the UI and also helps us uh, give the feedback in place in the Spinnaker rollout. That's the only extension that you would need. And once you have that, you can use the Argo rollouts for Kubernetes, for Kubernetes deployment with Spinnaker pipeline. This is one of the interesting use cases that are being used. Um, so the next use case is with this staged delivery across the environment. Um, right? So when in a continuous deployment, we want to be able to automate the test to uh, pre-production staging to production uh, as um, cleanly as possible. Is to do this typically in applications when you're deploying to Kubernetes, you have a two Git repositories, one with the uh, deployment manifest and the other one with the source code that actually builds the uh, Docker artifacts and that gets deployed. In Argos, it's typically the way uh, it's configured is using in another uh, controller called image updater that runs in the uh, Kubernetes namespace. All it basically does is it's like a, a, a workflow when a new image is detected in the repository, it goes and updates a Git repository of that application uh, with the new image that's uh, created and, and then the deployment happens with Argo CD. But, uh, but there is no easy way to do this if you are promoting from one environment to another, uh, like the integration to staging and staging to production, or <clears throat> there, there's no clean way to promote this if the uh, configuration for these services are being changed. So now uh, one of the uh, use cases that we commonly use here is that in the Spinnaker pipeline, um, once this staging environment is tested with the Git manifest, the configuration and uh, new Docker images, image, uh, the, after the testing is done, this auto promotion, what it does is it takes the um, re repository from staging, the changes merges into the production environment, uh, including the change to image tags. So that allows this automated promotion cleanly without uh, manual intervention for these. And 
generates a rollout to the production uh, as soon as the staging verification is done. So this is a fairly strong use case uh, that's used to do promote lower environment you know, testing to the production environment. So this is very useful here. One of the interesting things that you can do is also as the PR generated for the staging, you can test it and then merge only after test succeeds and then that gets promoted to production. Uh, so this is a fairly common use case uh, that is used. And the last one is the progressive delivery to multi-cluster environments. Again, as we saw, there's a progressive delivery to one deployment with the Orco rollouts that works in one cluster for that one particular application. But uh, we have these uh, cases where these applications are deployed in n number of these clusters. And some of these clusters cater to uh, low priority uh, use cases, and then some of them much higher reliability requirements. So delivering to these can also be done through a Spinnaker pipeline. You essentially roll it out to cluster one, which is like a pilot customers or low priority use cases. Then once that rollout is successful, then you kick off the second stage in Spinnaker pipeline that deploys to second set of regions, uh, second set of uh, customers or regions, use cases. And then once that is successful, then you automate the rollout to higher uh, load regions. So th this typically is done manually uh, today, uh, but uh, the Spinnaker pipeline in conjunction with this rollout uh, really automates this and makes it a clean delivery mechanism going all the way to all the clusters from low use case to high load regions. Um, so this is a very high level overview of how the Argo and Spinnaker are being used and in the enterprises where they have large number of groups and some of these groups are using Spinnaker exclusively and some of these groups are using Argo and with the Spinnaker. Um, so I hope this gives you a, a good overview of how these are currently being used in these environments. And uh, please reach out if you have any questions uh, we will be available on the YouTube channel at the time of this presentation. And back to you, Fadi. Thanks, Art, for a great presentation, Gopinath. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. For more continuous delivery content, please follow the CD Foundation on YouTube and Twitter and visit our website, https cd.foundation. You can also join CD Foundation Slack as well as sign up to our mail list to take part in conversations and contribute. All the links are in the description below. Don't miss our flagship event coming up, CDCon and GitOpsCon, which we are co-hosting with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. The event will take place on May 8 and 9, 2023 in Vancouver and co-located with Open Source Summit North America. Thanks again, Gopinath. Thanks everyone for joining and see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Thank you, Fatih.